What's up guys? New season of Fortnite, so you know what's up. Pro Guide's doing another little trick tip video, baby. My name's Cody, and let's jump into it, dog. Let's go. Season five of Fortnite came with a ton of new changes, many of which have completely reshaped the way we play the game at a competitive level. So today, I'll be going over tips and tricks to help you guys get adjusted to season five's meta. Most of us already know the map changes and the general gist of the season, so I won't focus on that too much. Instead, I'll try to stick more to how the changes are and how they affect the way we play. Spoiler alert, there are a lot of them, like changes to the shotgun meta, rotation methods, and even a couple of new exploits that you'll need to watch out for. So if you're ready, I am too. It's time for the question of the day. What is your arena point goal for season five? Let me know in the comments what that answer is. But other than that, give the video a like and let's jump into it. So one of the biggest topics around any season is shotguns. And this time around, the pump's sadly been vaulted, but they brought back the charge and tactical shotgun. The charge shotgun remains the same other than there's no mythic variety this time around. However, the tack shotgun did get a small player damage buff, making it slightly better than last time. But an even more significant change is the brand new Dragon's Breath shotgun. Oh, dude, it's so sick. Now, this one is pretty unique. It takes four ammos to shoot one shot, does a bit over 100 to the body and over 160 with a perfect headshot, has a really long reload, and oh yeah, it ignites wood. So this fire can actually continue to burn enemies after you've already shot. And when you combine that with the perfect shot, this baby theoretically can kill in one hit. Woo, that's pretty sweet. But does it make the dragon breasts worth using? Well, maybe. It's just such an odd shotgun, totally untraditional compared to what we've been used to. The high ammo usage, reload time, and limited range really restricts how you can play with it. So forget your typical build battles. However, if you can get really close to your enemy, maybe even utilize peace control and trap them in a wooden box, then you can get in close, hit a really impact shot, and hopefully deal a bit of burn damage. So between the charge and the tack, I think what you want to choose will most likely come down to preference. In season three, the charge was used more often, but now the tack is buffed. So I think they're in a similar state of balance. The tack shotgun definitely has an advantage pressuring builds since the higher rarities can do over 75 damage a shot. But the charge shotgun still has better range and can potentially one shot with a blue or higher. So it's got that thing going for it too. Ultimately, I think between these two, both are fine and it's down to preference. But should you take the dragon's breath over either of those? After our very initial impressions, probably not. At least most of the time. I sort of see it being useful for finding impact kills in stacked competitive endgames since it deals exceptionally high burst potential, just like the double barrel did back in season five. Still, with its low drop rate, we're just unsure if it'll actually shake up the meta. Next up, we gotta talk about rotation methods for this season. What's still viable, what's going to be used a lot, and what is gone. So one of the biggest changes is all the sand added near the middle of the map. I'm sure you guys already know, but if you stand still on this sand for a few seconds, your character sinks below, at which point you can move around and slowly build speed up to go faster than you can go on foot. Now, with how absolutely massive the sand area is, I feel like this is going to be one of the main rotation methods this season. The downside though, is that you have to stand still for a few seconds to actually fall into the sand, which might lead you to taking damage or getting a headshot sniped if there are nearby enemies. Watch out, brah. One way you can avoid that is by boxing up. And just as you're about to sink below, you edit a wall open and rotate. Most of the time, you won't be doing this, but if it's an end game or something, just know you can use the strategy to safely go underground. But what else do we got? Well, near the sand are these zero point crystals that you can break, 
which drop consumables that give 20 seconds of dash ability activated by double jumping. It actually has a different use, which we'll get to later in this video. But these zero point crystals might still be useful for quickly getting around the map anytime you come across one. Other than that, crash pads are gone, and so are the rifts that were all over the map. But they did add a rift fish you can find from fishing spots. This one honestly is going to be huge for rotations, just like the rift to go was back in the day. And you can hold up to three of them in a stack. So I think this will be the number one end game rotation method for all game modes. The only downside is that it does seem pretty hard to find. So you'll likely have to hit up a few fishing spots before you even see one. Good luck y'all. They're out there, but you'll have to look. Lastly, it seems Shockwaves and Bouncers decided to stick around for another season. So both of these and the combos you can do by using them together are still here for our end game rotations, as well as peppers and vehicles to get around during the mid game. Anyway, that's it for rotations this season. If you want to learn more though, hey, you can always talk with one of our incredible coaches who will quickly have you rotating like a god. Just visit the description link or click up here to get started. So another noteworthy change we noticed is the upgrade benches got vaulted. Now, this is kind of huge. I mean, upgrade benches were the most consistent way to get high tier weapons. But apparently, now that they're gone, the only way we can upgrade weapons is through the new quest givers found on the map. There are apparently a ton of these guys, 40 of them I think, scattered all around. They don't always spawn, but when they do, they offer quests a lot of which are pretty straightforward, but some difficult ones too, like bounties that require you to kill opponents. Anyway, if you complete a quest, you can return to them for a chance to upgrade your weapon at the cost of some gold bars, which you can earn by completing quests or by opening chests and produce boxes. Pretty much every POI has its own quest giver, and there are tons more at landmarks or other low key spots, so they shouldn't be too hard to find. Anyway, when it's coming to upgrading weapons, we still think it's viable this way, especially now that it doesn't use your materials. So try to start a quest early with them if you can, see if you have any other better rewards available, and then once you complete the quest, try to upgrade something from blue to purple since that gives the most significant jumps and stats. But moving on, the terror that was the RPG has finally returned to comp. Well, I guess you could still find them from Sharks last season, but this time around, there is a new way to get one. Where it at though? Well, there's a boss named Ruckus at Hydro 16, the dam to the east of Slurpee. He seems to roam around outside or on top of the floor usually. And if you can eliminate him, which is pretty tricky since he has a boatload of health, like over 600 bro, but he'll drop a gold heavy assault rifle and a purple RPG. Ooh, it's so shiny. And yes, he drops that every single time. So if you ask me, this definitely adds some life to this drop spot, as I'm sure plenty of players are gonna be landing here for a chance at getting that busted RPG. Whether the risk is worth the reward, well, that depends on you and how confident you are fighting for it. Because I know people are gonna be landing here every game. But alternatively, a strategy you can use is get to the land nearby like maybe at the gas station south or the shack southwest, loot up and then flank this spot one or two minutes into the game to see if you can clean up whoever's left and get that RPG all for yourself. Woo! All right, all right, all right. So I mentioned another use for the zero point dash ability and it's to exploit through turbo builds. Basically, if you do a zero point dash and break a wall with the exact right timing, you'll phase through turbo build. And yes, it works. But so far, it seems the timing required is super precise. Tack shotguns also work, but seem to be a bit easier with this strat. 
But then again, at the same time, the effect only lasts for 20 seconds. You can get it in the form of a zero point fish you can carry in your inventory. It's too early to tell whether these are gonna become a meta or not. Just because this dash ability seems like such a high skill mechanic that I know really talented players are gonna find uses for. But we probably won't know just how influential these are for at least, you know, a couple weeks. Beyond zero point dashes though, there's also the Mandalorian sniper rifle. Boom, headshot. I'm just hearing it in my head already. This is a mythic weapon that behaves like a typical sniper rifle, but with thermal vision. And you can get it by eliminating the Mandalorian himself. And he is located by his crash ship southeast of Colossal Coliseum. Now, what's special about this sniper is that if you try shooting it without scoping in, you actually end up doing a melee hit that propels you forward. This does 45 damage to players, which might be useful for finishing players off. But it also does 110 to structures, making it perfect for breaking into weak boxes. We don't know if there are any phasing setups for it yet, but the damage is high enough to where if you approach a weakened wall from a sneaky angle, you should be able to jump right into your opponent's box without them having time to react. Oh, and also, if you time the melee right before you hit the ground, it negates fall damage. So who knows, maybe sky bases are gonna make a return too. Either way, we just have to wait and see. All right, guys, hopefully you found our little analysis of the new season helpful. Again, it's still pretty early on in the season, so it wasn't too in depth. But within a few weeks, we should have a much better idea of how the pros are playing and what kind of cool things this season has to offer. I think the quest system, a ton of amazing loot route strategies are gonna form throughout the season. And I also can't wait to see what kind of effect the zero point dash has on build battles. Hopefully they're not just useless and we get a really cool mechanic that actually changes the way we play. But other than that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment your arena point goal for the season below, and subscribe with notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on all the incredible season five content that we have planned. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.